Sonic Movie and Equus Rhea Girls Chapter 12, The Trip Sonic could only groan in boredom as both his self and a Rainbow Dash laid on the ground looking miserable as Rainbow Dash could only raise her head up slightly while asking. How much longer will it take for us to get there? Uh, guys, we've only been on this thing for about an hour. This caused Sonic and Rainbow Dash to groan in boredom and annoyance as the two speedsters hated waiting, especially on something as slow as this. Luckily, we could take a stop nearby town. Though I think it would be best to keep a low profile since the planet is in a state of panic. In the meantime, you guys will just have to make yourselves comfortable for now. Guess you could say that his road trip just went down the coolest, am I right, Sunset? Sunset Shimmer could only glare at the blue hedgehog before turning the other way, giving her so-called animal friend the silent treatment. Sonic only laughed awkwardly as he whispered over to Rainbow Dash. She's still mad at me, isn't she? Yeah, no kidding. Let's just try not to get on her bad side. This is gonna be a long and boring trip, isn't it? Yep! Inside the space colony arc laid a small prison which was covered with iron bars with two individuals inside. Tom tried breaking the bars with the furniture inside of his seal but to, to no prevail. Hey Tom, for the last time, there's no point trying to break out of here. Even if we did, where would we go? Tom slammed the furniture one last time against the iron bars before giving up his assault as he sat back down near Maddie. There's got to be something we can do, Sonic, and the others can't just give up the Emerald to this freight. We've talked about this for months, Tom. We can't do anything unless Sonic and his friends come up with a plan to stop the cannon. You said you wanted Sonic to be the big hero. This is Chance to really prove himself without our help. I know, I just, I'm worried about the little guy. With the amount of times Robotnik comes back and with the number amount of people like the gun trying to go after Sonic. Just can't help but worry for his safety. Maybe it's just my father instincts taking over. You don't think I feel the same? Of course I worry for him and his friends. But I know that there comes a time in every parent's life where they have to let their kid make their own decisions in life. If we really raised him well, then we'd know whatever decision he makes will be the right one. I guess you're right. I just hope the little guy stands a chance against him. Shadow stared off outside the window if the space colony arc as he was left alone in his thoughts. The black hedgehog could only look back at a memory he had with someone in this very spot 50 years ago. Over 50 years ago on this same place stood two people as they watched the earth below them. Shadow could only look at the earth with disapproval while the person he stood next looked at the planet with excitement. Isn't it amazing Shadow, how such a beautiful planet with wandering people could exist? I don't understand. What makes you so patient staying here? Wouldn't you want to go back down by now? That's because I still have family here. I can't leave just yet without you guys. You would rather stay here with me? Why? I can't just leave you here not when I want us to go together to see how the planet is like down there. Tell you what, Shadow. Let's make a pinky promise that when everything is set in stone, we'll go down to the Earth together. Shadow could only stare at the girl next to him before he both individuals made a pinky promise, swearing that once everything was over that they would go down to Earth together. That was a promise made over 50 years ago as they both continued to watch the Earth from down below. Shadow could only snapped back to reality as he clenched his fist tightly, remembering that very memory reminded him why he was siding with the doctor. Shadow then turned the other away before walking away slowly leaving the spot where the once two friends stood completely empty. Later with Sonic, as night fell once more, the ship had finally made it to the nearest town as it landed perfectly in a secluded spot where no one would even dare looking. The ship opened as the first ones to hop out were Sonic and Rainbow Dash as they immediately ran outside before doing their own little dance. Yes! We finally made it, baby. Thanks, Celestia, that we made it. I didn't know how much longer I would have lasted. Are those two always this dramatic? Asking the obvious question, aren't you? Listen up everyone, we're only here to resupply and to fix the ship for any malfunctions. In the meantime, we should head over to the town close by to gather some food since I know everyone's hungry. You girls go on ahead. We'll stay here and keep the emeralds safe. What? I don't want to stay. We've spent almost the whole day on that ship. Don't you guys want to do anything fun? Sonic immediately stopped from talking any further after seeing the glare Sunset Shimmer gave him as he could only sigh while looking away defeated. 
All right, then it's settled then. The boys will stay here and set up camp while we'll go and get dinner for everyone. That includes you to Spike. Spike could only bark before running over to Sonic and the trio as the girls then left with Sunset Shimmer leading the way. An hour had passed since then as Sonic walked over to Tails and Knuckles who had already set up camp. Sonic could only sit between the duo who stared at the campfire in front of them. Alright, looks like we managed to set up camp, as expected from my best bros, am I right? However, despite them already setting up camp, Sonic could only notice the tired faces Tails and Knuckles had as the blue hedgehog sat near the yellow fox. Hey, you are a little buddy. Yeah, it's just ever since the whole Eggman thing started, we've been focusing on saving the world so much that we haven't had much time to ourselves. The fox is right. This quest of ours has exhausted us. You guys aren't wrong with Eggman planning on destroying the planet to deal in with Shadow. It's kind of hard to get some time to just enjoy yourselves. If only there was a way to do that. What are you implying, Hedgehog? Well, since the girls are gone, it's just us. You guys want to do something fun. That's Sonic? I know what you're gonna say, but I just can't help but just do something fun with my favorite trial with everything that's happened. Don't you guys just want to let loose for a change? Wouldn't the girls get mad if they find out? Don't worry about it, buddy. We'll be back before they even get here. Plus, aren't you guys just dying to get some fun? Knuckles, back me up here. Sonic could only put his hand around the red echidna shoulder. The red echidna could only think about for a few moments before smiling while looking at the others. You don't know what, uh, the hedgehog is right. Tomorrow will be the battle of our lives and decide the fate of this planet. I think we should just enjoy ourselves before our glorious battle tomorrow. Guys, wait! Are you sure it's a good idea not to tell the girls about this? What if Twilight and the others come back, and you're not here? I'm with Spike with this one, it's just a risk. What if something bad happens? That's simple. We'll bring the Emerald with us like always, but we'll be more careful. Plus, Spike could come with us since this is a boys' night out. Spike and Tails looked at each other with a worried expression as Sonic reassured them. Don't worry. Well, if you go for like an hour or two, and I'm sure those girls take forever to come back. We'll be back before you know it, I promise. I don't know about this, Sonic. Don't worry, guys. It'll be fun. I'm sure there's a carnival here somewhere. We'll just ride a couple rides and do some games. After that, we'll be back in no time. Tails looked unsure for a second before he finally gave in. Well, it wouldn't hurt just to have a little fun. Thanks, little buddy. I promise I'll make this your best night ever. Now all that's left is you, Spike. The dog quickly looked down in shame as deep down he too wanted to let loose a bit. I guess we'll go how are we gonna go without people thinking worthy of us. Sonic and Tails looked at each other as they already knew the perfect disguise they could wear. Back with the girls, Sunset Shimmer and the other girls were searching a grocery store as they each searched for snacks for not only themselves but for their friends back at the camp. Pinkie Pie immediately grabbed a cart before putting as many sweets as possible. Rarity walked over to Applejack who was picking up some apples as she asked. Applejack dear, what on earth are you getting? Well, since our red in the back over there is still new to Earth's food, I was planning on making him some apple treats like apple pie or apple cupcakes. That Echidna sure does love sweets, especially grapes. Fluttershy walked over to see Twilight grabbing a couple of snacks, especially with ones that had mint on it as Fluttershy could only ask as well. Goodness, Twilight. Why are you getting so many mint snacks? I know how much Tails likes eating mint snacks, so I thought he deserved some treats. That's very thoughtful of you, Twilight. I'm sure he would appreciate you doing that. Back with Sunset Shimmer, she was walking down an aisle while looking around to find herself a snack. However, due to her clumsiness, she accidentally bumped into someone. Whoops, I'm so sorry for- Sunset Shimmer looked in shock as the person she bumped into was no other than Flash Sentry as he stood there with an awkward smile. Hey, Sunset. Flash, what are you doing here out of all places? I should be asking you that. Didn't excited it to see you here. Well, you know me, just another adventure with me and the girls. Especially since what happened on the news. Crazy right! Ever since that lunatic broke half of the moon, Canterlot has been in a state of panic where people were barely able to gather supplies. This was the nearest town I could find that hasn't been in chaos or out of supplies. You about that, you see, hey. You don't need to say anything. I'm guessing that weird mustache guy has something to do with you and the others. Sunset Shimmer stood in silence as Flash had already assumed what she was about to explain. 
It's kind of obvious. I mean, you guys did suddenly leave for a while and that look of your face already tells me everything. Trust me, you haven't even gotten to the craziness part yet. Oh my gosh, is that Flash? The two looked over to see the other girls walk over as they greeted the blue hair individual as he waved back. What you doing here, Flash? You're to steal some away from us? Pinky. Relax. I was just here to gather supplies. But if you want, I could join you guys for moral support. I don't think that's a good idea. Last thing we need is something bad to happen. Sunset Shimmer words could only come back to bite her as they heard a bunch of people screaming outside as someone ran inside the grocery store as they told one of their friends. Look what's happening. Those boys are killing it. What do you mean? I just got a text from the others. Ever since those three came to the carnival, everyone's been having a blast. Come on, we don't want to miss out on the fun. The girls then looked amongst each other as they got had a feeling that they already knew who those three individuals are. Flash looked over to see Sunset tighten her fist in anger as she started to turn red. Knowing full well what she can do when she was mad he decided to back up a little. They wouldn't. I am having so much of the fun right now. A bunch of people watched as Knuckles stayed on a bull rider as they cheered on for the red echidna. Knuckles had managed to stay in for about 10 minutes already which made everyone cheer in delight as stood up and jumped of the bull ride. I have conquered the creature of the bulls. The others around him could only cheer for him as he received a medal for longest time on the bull. Knuckles then ran past them to as he watched Tails and Spike playing one of the arcade games. Tails! Watch out, she's behind you! I'm on it, Spike! Tails then pressed one of the buttons on the control which made his character before a backflip while turn around with a gun dropping on his hand before firing a laser gun at the target causing them to win the game. This caused Spike to raise his paw as the yellow fox could only high-five the purple dog. That move was sick, how did you learn how to do that? I don't know, I just assumed pressing three buttons at the same time would do something crazy. Look what those humans gave me, a piece of gold to honor my victory. That's great, Knuckles. You're starting to sound like Sonic? Speaking of which, crazy? Over here. The trio looked over to see the blue hedgehog sliding down a railing with a skateboard before landing in front of them with the skateboard in hand. Guess who won a prize? Still doesn't compare to my Medal of Honor. That's nothing, Tails just scored a new record and just won the most amount of tickets. Tails could only laugh at how everyone was comparing who won the best prizes which was soon followed by a yawn. I'm glad we had this opportunity to let loose for a change, though we should head back soon. Who knows what time those girls are coming back to camp? I suggest we start leaving now, after I spent my tickets to get a small price from the arcade. Tails then picked up his tickets which covered the little fox's face making him unable to see what's in front of him. He then soon heard a gasp of horror as he walked a few steps as he heard Sonic's voice tremble. Tails! Don't worry Sonic! I promise I'll get you and the others something, too. Tails then immediately bumped into something, causing him to drop his tickets as he looked up to see someone standing above him which made him stood in fear. This person was no other than Twilight who was accompanied by the other girls including Flash who stood in shock in what he was seeing. Oh, hey, Twilight. What on earth are you for doing? And what the heck are you all wearing? You like it. Me and Tails picked it up. No offense, Doring, but those outfits look terrible. This... That a talking blue hedgehog alien? It's a long story. I think it would best to explain later. That's so cool! The girls could only look at Flash with shocked expressions, especially since most of their reactions after meeting Sonic and his friends for the first time were either them feeling terrified or scared for their lives. Wait a minute, you're not shocked. Or scared? Like I told Sunset a while ago. With everything that happened, you start becoming less surprised at this point. With the other Twilight and Sunset coming from another world and Meg being used by you girls it becomes more of a regular thing now to see something like this. But then again seeing a talking blue hedgehog, yellow fox, and Riddick it isn't something you see every day. Hey Rainbow Dash, I heard from the crowd over there that if you win one of the challenges then you will win a new Rainbow Gut Hair. Wait, really? Which game is... Rainbow! Oh right! Sonic then noticed Flash standing next to Sunset Shimmer as he could only remember how much she talked about him which made him say this out loud. Oh, I heard about this guy. You must be Sunset's friend. What are you doing here? Last time I checked, Sunset told me you live somewhere in Canterla. Him being here should be the least of your concern, Sonic. Flash could only look at the blue hedgehog strangely when he heard Sunset call him by his name being. 
It wasn't too long ago that he had a conversation with Sunset about her so-called mysterious friend popped up in his mind. Flash could only gasp in shock before pointing at the blue hedgehog. Wait a minute! Is he the one you're talking about? Is this Sonic? Yep, and I must say, you're even cooler in person when meeting you up close. But I gotta say, you need to work on shooting your shots better, dude. If you want your message to get across that you like her, then you gotta be more slick since Sunset's a bit dense when it comes to people making a move on her. You gotta try a little harder and... And just like that, both Sunset Shimmer and Flash could look away while blushing as some of the girls couldn't help but laugh which eased the situation. Sonic, what the heck? Oops, my bad. What are you even doing here anyways? I told you to stay back at the camp. I know it's just with everything that's happened, I just thought the boys and I could take a little break. With the fate of the world happening tomorrow and everything, isn't it okay to just enjoy ourselves? Can we just stay here a bit longer, please? I don't want to hear it, we're heading back to camp and that's final. Sonic then dropped on the floor as he pleaded for Sunset Shimmer to change her mind. Come on, Sunset, please, 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 please. Sunset Shimmer was about to say something until she felt Flash's hand upon her shoulder as she looked over to see Flash smiling calmly. Well, it couldn't hurt to have a little fun. The little guy does have a point. With everything that's happened, it'll be nice to for you guys to have a break for a change. See, he gets cash as my drift. I mean, have you seen how cool this place is? They got so many fun rides and games here. Can we just stay a bit longer? I'm sure everyone here will have fun. I heard they're even seeking who scoops of ice cream, and if you eat it so, then you will win a special prize. Ice cream! Well, sign me because Pinky's about to dominate that contest. We could just buy something from the store and bring it back. It didn't take too long for Pinkie Pie to kneel on the floor as she pleased with Sonic while showing the other girls her puppy eyes. Sunset Shimmer couldn't believe how childish these two were acting as they bold repeated while pleading. To further prove his case, Sonic kept going on and on about how they should stay and how fun it would be for everyone. Despite still holding a grudge against the Blue Hedgehog, Sunset couldn't help but sigh knowing that he was still young. Throughout the months she's known him, he's always had this carefree nature and fun personality which make her laugh sometimes with how silly he was. At this moment it completely reminded her about who he really was and despite him being arrogant sometimes, he was still a good kid with a good heart. She could only sigh in defeat while looking away, reluctant in what she was about to say as Sonic still kept talking only for him to stop once she spoke. Fine. I guess it can hard to stay a bit longer. Wait, are you sure about this? I don't see why not. Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie seem to want to stay a bit longer. This place does seem fun. I guess it couldn't hurt. Splendid. Let's continue with our fun then. Then it's settled. Let's make this a night to remember everyone. The fun immediately began when Rarity and the other girls took the boys into the changing room as they wanted them to appear more decent much to the reluctance of the critters. When they were done however, Sonic and the trio came out with decent clothes on which made Rarity feel proud of herself for choosing their clothes. Tails and Twilight were currently eating mint chocolate pancakes before. Tails felt a cupcake hit behind him back as they looked back to see Sonic and Rainbow Dash looking away innocently. To get back at them, Tails took out his device which summoned many holograms of himself before they threw a barrage of cream towards the speedsters which made them trap within a layer of cream causing both Tails and Twilight to laugh at them. Applejack took her head out of barrel. With her face covered with water which was accompanied with an apple she grabbed with her mouth. Much to her surprise, Knuckles tried to do the same only for him to pick the barrier up making it turn over which dropped the water on the red echidna who could only laugh thinking that he won the game. Sonic and Pinky grabbed a few darts at their target being the balloons which stick to the wall. They immediately threw all their darts leaving on the balloon still intact only for the gamekeeper to quiver in fear as the darts that were thrown almost killed him. Sonic, Tails and Knuckles could only ride on one of the drop towers as it brought them high in the air before the ride immediately came down which made Sonic throw his hands up in delight while Tails screamed in fear. Knuckles could only look over to weirdly to see Tails screaming like a girl as the photo was taken of them at that moment. Sunset Shimmer tried tossing one of the rings to the bottles only for it to miss which almost made her lose it right then and there. That was until she saw Flash giving it a try as he managed to throw it in one of the bottle making them win a small teddy bear. Due to his generosity, he gave it to Sunset Shimmer as she could only turning away blushing while pouting. Sonic? Tails and Knuckles were dragged to a photo booth along with Flash as the girls wanted to take pictures with them. 
One picture had them doing silly faces while another had them smiling normally Sonic did his signature thumbs up. Later, Twilight and Tails entered a haunted house made by the carnival as they walked. Inside while shaking in fear. Once they got close enough, they heard screaming behind them which made them scream while running the opposite directions. Turns out the person that scared them was Pinkie Pie as she could only laugh while taking off her mask Sonic and Rainbow Dash could only skateboard down a railing while looking compatibly at one another as they race without the usage of their power. Due to this, when they reached a finish line it was considered a draw. Fluttershy and Rarity could only watch Knuckles weirdly as the red echidna had two large cotton candy with both of his hands and one on his forehead. The red echidna could only walk around normally thinking that there was nothing wrong since he thought it was a earth custom thing to have on himself. Sunset Shimmer could only feel something push her against Flash as Sonic could only laugh while teasing the teenager how good they looked together much to the annoyance of Sunset Shimmer. There was a montage of photos taken during their night there. One had a photo of Applejack and Rarity laughing while Knuckles had glasses on while trying to understand something one of Earth's customs. Another had Sonic, Tails. Rainbow Dash and Twilight in one photo riding down a roll coaster with both speedsters enjoying the ride while the duo behind them looked terrified. On to the main event, a bunch of people were dancing on the dance floor which made Sonic drag tails on stage as they both were the center of attention. Everyone around them started clapping as Sonic and Tails could only join along before dancing the same moves they did back at Siberia. Tails summoned his holograms of himself as they danced around Sonic which made the crowd go nuts. The other girls could only cheer on for the duo as Sunset looked over to see Sonic enjoying himself which made her expression soften. Tails holograms then threw Sonic in the air as he did his signature, Sonic Adventure 1 cover pose, before landed back on the ground. To continuing the dance. The girls then soon joined them on stage along with Knuckles and Flash as they danced to their heart's content knowing full well that this may their last. As soon as the audience has clapped for them, Sonic immediately grabbed the mic before speaking to the audience. Thank you guys, you all are so kind. Now for our last performance for the day, give it a four. Sonic then pointed to the audience as everyone from the group was surprised to where the blue hedgehog had pointed up to. Sunset Shimmer, get up here. Sunset Shimmer was left completely stunned as the audience cheered around her as she could only walk towards the blue hedgehog upstage. What are you doing? I'm giving you the spotlight, of course. You've always talked about singing in front of an audience such as this. Why not give it a try now? But that's different. You'll do fine. Trust me on this. But I've never performed in front of an audience as big as this. I don't know if I could do this alone. Before Sunset could counter object, she felt something on her shoulder as she turned around to see Flash behind her who could only smile. Who said you have to do this alone? I'll be right beside you. We'll do this together. Flash could only offer his hand to her as she could only look at the guitar player in shock as he could only ask her. Are you with me? At that ever moment, it felt like all her fears had faded away as she never expected Flash out of all people to encourage her to perform. Regardless, Sunset Shimmer could only smile softly before taking Flash's hand as they made their way upstage. Sonic and the others could only watch from the sideline as they cheered for her. Don't be afraid. We're all with you. Let's go, Sunset! We believe in you Sunset, show them what you're made of. Flash grabbed one of the guitars upstage as he looked over to Sunset one more time. Sunset had grabbed the microphone before looking about nervous as Flash could only try to reassure her. Hey Sunset, you've got this. Your friends believe in you. I believe in you. Now let's make this a night to remember. Sunset could only smile in response as she then took in a fresh breath of air one last time before she then began to slowly sing her song. Power was all I desired But all that grew inside me Was a darkness I acquired When I began to fall And I lost the path ahead That's when your friendship found me And it lifted me instead As Sunset began to sing her song the more confident she became as her friends cheered on the sideline. Memories from her former self started to reappear as she recalled all the mistakes she made in the past. Like a phoenix burning bright in the sky I'll show there's another side to me you can't deny 
I may not know what the future holds, but hear me when I say that my past does not define me, cause my past is not today. Ambition is what I believed would be the only way to set me free. But when it disappeared and I found myself alone, that's when you came and got me and it felt like I was home. At that point, the audience could only start dancing as Sonic along with the others continued to cheer for her. A yellow aura then started to appear around her as she sang from the bottom of her heart. The aura then started to spread around the audience as they look in amazement in what they were seeing. Rock on sunset. Like a phoenix burning bright in the sky. Oh, so there's another side to me you can't deny. I may not know what the future holds, but hear me when I say that my past does not define me, cause my past is not today. As soon as she was done performing she could hear the audience cheer loudly which only made Sunset feel more proud of herself. Sunset looked over to see Sonic and the others screaming loudly with Sonic and Pinky cheering the loudest. She then felt something grab onto her and lift her in the air as Flash had ran over to hug her. That was amazing Sunset! I knew you could do it! Okay okay, you could put me down now. Flash then put her down slowly as his arms were still around her waist. Sorry! Got a little caught up in the moment there. As expected from Flash Sentry. Both of them could only smile at one another with Sunset being the one to speak. Thank you, Thuff. You really helped me back there. No problem. That's what friends are for. The moment would ultimately be ruined after they heard kissing noises as they turned over to see Sonic and Rainbow Dash making kissing noises. Sonic started to intimidate Flash's voice in a silly manner while Rainbow Dash did the same for Sunset. A oh, Sunset. I won't ever let you go again. Oh, Flashy Boo! The others could only laugh as Sunset and Flash departed from one another with Sunset glaring at the two speedsters. Little did they know that certain black hedgehog was watching from afar. Throughout that entire time, Shadow has been watching the group from where he stood as he questioned himself in his task. This Sunset Shimmer, she was different from the rest, seeing how she acted and the way she expressed herself reminded him of someone. Someone who didn't even cross his mind after what had happened so long ago. Strange, she reminds me of... Maria. The black hedgehog quickly brushes away those thoughts as he focused more on what his objection was. The black hedgehog then teleported away leaving no trace of himself behind. Later, everyone surrounded a campfire as they all made it way back to camp with them bringing some snacks like marshmallows. Each one of them talked about how fun it was back at the carnival while melting up marshmallows with their sticks. However, there were two individuals missing from the group as far away from them. Sunset Shimmer distanced herself to get some fresh air. That was some experience. Sunset Shimmer looked out into the woods as she could only reflect back on everything that's happened. Some part found it hard to believe that all of this happened in a stand of a few days as she could only sigh in disbelief. But there was still one problem left and speaking of that problem, it came to her. Hey Sunset. Sunset Shimmer looked to see Sonic with a S'more on his hand before he ate it while walking to her. Hey Sonic, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with the others? Flash said I should check up on you to see if you're okay and everything. I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. However, things would take a turn for the worse as both stood with each other while awkwardly looking the other way. It was no surprise they haven't had a full conversation since the stunt that Rainbow Dawes and him had. It was thanks to this that neither one knew what to do or say to one another but both of knew someone had to start the conversation off. Hey Sunset. What's up? If you don't mind me asking, you want to follow me I've got something to show you. Sunset Shimmer looked skeptical at first before she finally agreeing as Sonic dashed in top speeds leaving Sunset Shimmer to look on in confusion before she soon followed him. Sonic where are you taking us? 
Don't worry, just try to keep up slow poke. It took a few minutes before Sonic ran past a few bushes forcing Sunset Shimmer to make her way past those bushes which irritated her. Sonic, I swear wherever you taking me better be worth it. Sunset Shimmer opened her eyes to see a huge tree that stood out amongst the forest as the tree was surrounded by water with only a small bridge that connected the two sides. The moonlight that reflected upon the water made the scenery even more beautiful as the stars above them were ever so present. She walked a few steps to see Sonic waiting for her as she could only wonder how he found something. Like this. They both sat down as she started the topic off. This place looks... So pretty how were you able to find this? When you're the fastest creature, you tend to find things when you least expect it. So, what made you bring me here? I uh, wanted to apologize about what happened earlier with Rainbow Dash. I guess I just caught up in the moment and I didn't realize how that could have put our lives at your party. Sunset Shimmer looked over to see the blue hedgehog looking away nervously as he continued in his apology. Sunset, when you said I couldn't keep my word when it came to you, you were right. I should have never done something so drastic that it would have put you and the others in danger. I'm also sorry about today for sneaking out with the others, I just... It's okay. Sonic looked over to see Sunset looking away as this time, it was her turn to explain herself. I'm sorry for jumping the gun and yelling at you like that. It also wasn't right of me to have given you the silent treatment all day. Sometimes I just let my anger take the better of things. I should just talk to you about it more calmly. Don't worry about, with the number amount of times I do this, I'm surprised I haven't driven my dad insane yet. It's not only that, deep down I was also worried. Don't worry about it, Eggman and Shadow don't know where we're at, so it's fine. I mean about you. Sonic was left completely stunned as he couldn't understand why she was so worried about him. Sunset Shimmer continued. What you did with Rainbow Dash was really reckless, but now thinking about it, I'm the last person to call you out on that. Especially when I made mistakes that could gotten people killed. This left the blue hedgehog confused and startled but since he knew this could be a heavy subject to talk about, he tried his best to assure her that she didn't have to tell him anything. Sunset, you don't have to. No, I think it's best you finally know the full truth about why I was alone that night. Even though I told you some things about what had happened I've never given you the whole story about it. Sonic I, I wasn't the same person I was today. Like I told you that night when I got people hurt. It wasn't the way you think. It's no secret that I'm not from this world from what I've told you in the past. Y you mentioned it was a world called Equestrio, one filled with ponies and magic of some sorts. I wouldn't have really believed if it weren't for the Battle of the Bands thing. But if you don't mind me asking, what did you mean by what you said earlier when you told me you weren't the same person back then? When I was still a pupil of Princess Celestia, I was too arrogant about the things I wanted and cared little about feeling of others. Even when she tried guiding me towards the right path I still remained selfish and cruel to the point where Celeste had even sent me away. I later returned to steal a crown from the other Twilight which I had used to transform myself into some kind of hideous monster. Sonic could only remain silent with a sorrowful expression as Sunset continued to explain. If it wasn't for Princess Twilight, I might have done something worse than taking over the school. The worst part is I know deep down in my heart not everyone has forgiven for the actions I committed against everyone. I tore Rainbow Dash and the others apart. I broke Flash heart by only using him for my own gain even when he was the only few that cared about me. To make matters worse I used magic from another world to make everyone my slaves. It was a lot to take in but telling from the expression on Sonic's face but deep down he slowly began to understand why she was so distraught that night. However, he knew that the guilt was killing her from the inside, he knew that feeling of being responsible for one's actions of the past. After the fall formal, I can forget the hatful glares everyone gave me even the girls seemed reluctant at first when it came to being friends with me. It felt like the whole world was against me. Until later that night I had met you. Sunset tried her best not to break down right then and there but from what the blue hedgehog could see, the tears were becoming present. You were the first out of everyone to talk to me when everyone wanted me gone. You stretched your arm out to me, you believed in me when no one else did. Ever since that night I was so grateful for what you did for me for those days you came to visit, but it wasn't after I thought about telling you all this is when I started to feel doubtful about us. Because... I was afraid that you'll push me away like everyone else. It was only when those words came out of her mouth that Sonic had understood what she was trying to imply. 
is, is that why when you asked me earlier if I had met the other version of you from the past, if I were to still want to be friends with you. Sunset Shimmer could only shake her head sadly before wiping the tears from her eyes. Sunset, what you did in the past doesn't matter anymore. Like I told you that night, don't let what happened hold you back from what you want to be now. Even if I had met and fought the old you, I would have turned you away because unlike Eggman, you felt remorseful for your actions. Despite whatever circumstances or possibilities of us meeting, I would never turn you away because I the Sunset I know one of the most kindest and bravest people I've ever met. Sonic looked over to see Sunset Shimmer wiping away one of her tears as she could only laugh while showing a small smile. Thank you! Don't sweet it, Sunset. At least now I know not tick you off since, since Dash told me that almost everyone thinks you're scary when you get mad. She's not exactly wrong either. Hey, I'm not that scary when I get angry. You sure, buddy? Sonic could only laugh seeing the annoyed yet playful eye roll she gave him as she too started to laugh along with him. It was only when the blue hedgehog realized how much time had went by when he started to wonder if the others were worried. Not wanting to alarm them, Sonic could only stand up slowly before offering his hand towards Sunset. Now since this problem is now of the way, let's head back. I want to get some s'mores before they're all gone. Well, we better hurry then knowing Pinkie Pie she probably might have devoured the wall thing by now. Before they could get up though, Sonic could stop in his tracks as the blue hedgehog could only hear a faint sound. A sound that was not so far away that was coming their direction. Sonic stood up immediately while staying on guard, his eyes focusing on wherever the faint sound was coming from. This concerned Sunset as she could only ask the blue hedgehog. Sonic, is something wrong? The noise was faint but the blue hedgehog was able to figure out what was about to happen as without a second thought. He grabbed Sunset's arm before dashing the opposite direction. It wasn't too long before an explosion was heard as Sonic covered Sunset Shimmer from the blast. Smoke merged from the blast as Sonic stood in front of Sunset to face off against the culprit that started this mess. When the smoke had cleared, the silhouette of familiar Black Hedgehog emerged from the smoke as it was no other than the ultimate life form himself standing in front of the two. Hello again, Faker. Sonic and Sunset Shimmer stood in horror as Shadow stared at them menacingly while crossing his arms. Sonic stood in a fighting position, preparing for whatever Shadow might throw at him. This will be my only warning to you, Hedgehog. Give the girl to me or else. Not a chance, Faker. Don't say I didn't warn you then. Without a second thought, Shadow teleported in front of Sonic before uppercutting him in the air before teleporting in the air before slamming him down to the lake below. Sonic! Sunset Shimmer then felt a hand grabbed her as Shadow restrained her with just one arm. Let go of me. Sonic immediately jumped out the lake before dusting himself off while glaring at the black hedgehog. Leave her out of this. My business with her does not concern you, Faker. Let this be warning that if you don't give up that emerald then she'll perish. Sonic then tried charging at Shadow only for him to teleport away along with Sunset Shimmer as one last surprise he looked up to see an energy beam hovering above him as it smashed down on Sonic causing him to be knocked on the floor. Sonic! Sonic tried to reach out for her but his body was already in bad shape which made it harder to move. To make matters worse, he was starting to lose consciousness as his eyes began to blink slowly as the only remains thing he could see was Sunset being teleported away as he could mutter a few words. Sunset. No?